I'll travel back in time and explore the largest 13th century Mongolian artifacts ever assembled and see Mongolian culture brought back to life with music, art, and performances. All this at the new Life and Legacy of Genghis Khan exhibit opening tomorrow. Our Cor Harlan live from OMSI with a sneak peek of the new exhibit. Cor? Hi, Ken. Hi, Jenny. Boy, this is a real, uh, a real history lesson of sorts that's opening up. Uh, the exhibit opens at OMSI tomorrow, and it involves the life and times of this guy right here, a replica of this guy right here. You may recognize him as Genghis Khan. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, reigned from about, uh, oh, from the early 1200s, uh, died about uh, 67 years of age or so. Jen Powers is uh, the woman with most of the answers here at OMSI. She's uh, kind of uh, leading this exhibit a little bit. Thank you for having us in here this morning. Sorry about all the masks, but <laughs> that's the way it is. So uh, tell me just a little bit, first of all, the, 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 uh, the museum and the exhibit itself, Genghis Khan. Why Genghis Khan? He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's still his, voice, his name still evokes a lot of things 700 years after his death, doesn't it? Yeah, so the life and legacy of Genghis Khan is really just an exploration of not only 13th century Mongolia, what was going on culturally at the time for the people living nomadically, but also Genghis Khan, his story, his unification of the Mongol Empire, the rise and fall of the empire. Now, when we talk about Genghis Khan, mm -hmm. uh, I say we've, we, we have a lot of thoughts about a violent, uh, aggressive, uh, land acquiring, uh, dominating sort of a regime. And he was certainly that, and his sons were certainly that, because they, oh, they took, describe for me the land mass that they took over, because it's significantly huge. Right? It is. So uh, at the time of Genghis Khan's death, essentially the Caspian Sea all the way to the Korean Peninsula, largest land empire ever known to exist about the size of Africa. The whole continent almost, yeah. right? The whole continent. He yeah. handed it off to his sons. And I say, I say the guy kind of a, in, in today's eyes, he'd be sort of seen as a, as a brutal kind of dictator. But you say there's some progressive elements within Genghis Khan's reign that, uh, that stand out as well, right? Definitely. And I think that's why this exhibit is so important. You know, we're, we're really presenting history in the most unbiased way that we can and showing both sides of Genghis Khan, because you're right. On one side, you have a very brutal warrior who is conquering a lot of land. But on the other side, you see this unifying statesman, someone mm -hmm. who implemented a lot of progressive social programs and really brought an empire together. Well, this is perfect for the times that we are in because it is a museum piece. Uh, there is not a tremendous amount of interactivity with a lot of the uh, artifacts, and there are some authentic artifacts here. Uh, as well as uh, some replicas of what the guy uh, looked like here. It opens tomorrow here at OMSI. It'll be going on for some time. You want to get your kids out of the house, uh, get them out of the Xbox, get them out of their phones and devices and stuff like that. Get them down here and teach them a little bit about history because this is a lot of... Uh, this guy and his family and his reign, they ruled over the biggest, uh, gosh, the biggest land mass that you can think of, uh, which, which would be all the way from the Pacific all the way almost into Europe, and, he, and it, was, it was a pretty close call there from uh, him being able to invade Europe as well. We'll go into a little bit more of this, but you can learn all of it here at OMSI again. Beginning tomorrow, Jenny and Ken, I'll take you out with this here too. They've got some of the favorites, fortunately. The Emperor's sword is still behind glass, so we can't get at that this morning. Mm. Well, that's pretty good because we don't trust you around sharp objects anyway. <laughs> It's gone oh, poorly you know in the how, past. You know how I got a thing for the swords. <laughs> we <laughs> know. I got a thing yes, for swords. Right? Yes, we were terrified. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll thanks. It looks like a fascinating <laughs> exhibit, though. It yeah. does, yeah. yeah. All right, 540.